Welcome to Gadget Trainer, where we'll be focusing on the Splattershot and the Tinatech. The Splattershot is considered a short-range weapon by many competitive players, has been a constant in the metagame since Splatoon 1, and is fairly easy to pick up and get started. As you can see on the side here, the Splattershot comes in two variants. The regular Splattershot on the left, and the Tinatech Splattershot on the right. The Splattershot comes with Burst Bombs as its sub-weapon, and Splashdown for its special. The Tinatech comes with the Splat Bomb as its sub-weapon, and the Inkjet for its special. As a weapon, the Splattershot has a fairly decent fire rate. Not as fast as other shooter counterparts like the Inzaps or the splash o -matics, but it can still put out quite a bit of ink. It's one of the more accurate shooters, with a decent amount of range compared to the other shooters. If you're looking for an aggressive weapon that can still do a decent painting of the map, this is it. Without any form of ink efficiency abilities, the splatter shot can shoot for nearly 10 seconds. The splatter shot is considered an automatic weapon, meaning you don't have to constantly press the ZR button for the continuous rate of fire. Without any ink efficiency, the splatter shot can throw two burst bombs. With practice, maintaining ink to pester long distance enemies with this kit is easy. The Tinatech, on the other hand, has a splat bomb and you can only throw one. It would take practically two peers of sub safer to throw two splat bombs. However, unlike burst bombs, a splat bomb will kill in one hit, where with burst bombs you need two direct hits. One of the things that makes the splatter shot so good is its kill time. The splatter shot is a three shot kill, with its fire rate making it one of the best aggressors in the game. However, keep in mind in online play, that latency of hitting other players may not always go in your favor, and it might feel like four shots instead. Its kill time and fire rate means that it's good at slaying the enemy team. You can ink yourself out of a tough situation in most cases. The fall off, when you arc the shots and they begin to descend, it'll take four hits to land a kill. The splatter shot's fall off is one of the easier ones to aim and keep track of for those people hiding up high or behind walls. With the splatter shots kit, you can use burst bombs to shorten the amount of shots you need to kill an enemy. One direct burst bomb hit will make the splatter shot into a two shot kill. Burst bombing enemies can get them stuck in your ink as you pounce on them for a kill, or help kill them faster if they're already weak. An indirect burst bomb though will still need three shots to kill, but as I said earlier, it can still be good to get enemies stuck in your ink as you approach them. If you didn't know already, when you jump, the weapon you fire becomes less accurate. This in mind, the splatter shot deviation when it's jumping isn't terrible, but I can't say I recommend it either, considering its primary fire is accurate already. Personally, I try not to jump in firefights, but it can happen depending on who or what you're trying to evade. The splatter shot comes with the splashdown as a special, making it especially good because you can snag a kill with a well-thrown burst bomb to enemies who are on the farthest edge of the splashdown. Keep in mind though, people can shoot you out of this special, so try not to use it in a panic all the time. The Tinatech comes with Inkjet, a special with both range and mobility allowing you to move in and take out weapons that outrange you. It combos well with many specials, especially Ink Armor. If a Splatling has been keeping you at bay, try using this special to get him out. The Splatter Shot shares ranges with quite a few weapons. It is at equal range with the Splat Duelies. There is a better chance you'll kill the Duelies before they kill you. However, keep in mind that the kill time of a Duelies roll is faster than your own fire. The end zap and the Splatter Shot are also equal range. However, there is a chance that the end zap might kill you first, as their fire rate is faster and will hit you first if you walk into their shots. The 52 gal outranges the splatter shot by just a little, but is different in that its shots are more RNG based. Before approaching a 52, keep that slight range difference in mind, but also remember that by strafing or moving side to side can help you dodge their RNG. Splatter shot outranges splash of Maddox and under, Meanwhile, it's outranged by range blasters and greater. Primary reasons you would choose the splatter shot over the Tenatech is its mobility. While the splashdown can be shot down, it still has its occasional uses. The explosion can clear all bombs, meaning it can be used to clear bomb rushes out. Burst bombs make it easy to maneuver and easily climb walls and skirt through enemy ink to approach places you want to go. Burst bombs are great at pestering long range options like jet squelchers and chargers and pair well with blasters for cleanup. 
Some maps that the Splatter Shot can do really well on are Mako Mart, Moray Towers, The Reef, and Black Belly Skate Park. Some good gear to run on it is Quick Respawn, Respawn Punisher, Swim Speed, and even a little quick Super Jump. Of course, how much you put on is up to you. The Tenetek is different that with Splat Bombs, while you can be a nuisance with Burst Bombs, Splat Bombs force people to move. This can force people and bait them into doing what you want. Inkjet provides a stronger option of moving back into the middle and apply a lot more pressure than compared to its counterpart. Tenetek is good on almost all maps, being a very versatile weapon. Some abilities that go good on Tenetek are Comeback, Stealth Jump, Special Power Up, and Special Saver. Here's hoping that this little video helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one.